New Zealand, an island nation isolated from the rest of the world by thousands of kilometres of open ocean. Landscapes forged by titanic forces, peaks carved by fire and ice, rugged coastlines and primeval forests. Over millions of years, these islands and neighbouring Australia became extraordinary evolutionary laboratories. Bizarre species found nowhere else on Earth emerged and thrived. Parrots are usually found in forests, but in New Zealand, they live on snow-covered mountains. Kia are globally recognised as one of the most intelligent bird species on the planet. Lizards have adapted to live on cliffs that in winter are covered with ice. We hadn't realised that New Zealand lizards had evolved to such extreme conditions in a valley that gets heavily frosted and iced over winter. Other animals adapted to live in places that never see daylight. The story for New Zealand's wildlife can change daily. Active volcanoes and major earthquakes sometimes alter the landscape in seconds. How have New Zealand's animals adapted to some of the most extreme environments on Earth? You going to mug me? I might get a mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Download Veli now. New Zealand is one of the most geologically unstable countries in the world. Nowhere proves this better than Fakari, White Island, an active volcano found just 48 kilometres off the coast of the North Island. What makes it so fascinating is that it's a window into the past, to the time when dinosaurs became extinct. Many scientists believe that around 65 million years ago, a giant asteroid hit the Earth. The impact would have caused an immense dust cloud. Darkening the sky for months on end. It might also have had the same effect as a massive earthquake, triggering gigantic volcanic eruptions. If it did, White Island shows us what much of the world may have looked like. White Island is New Zealand's largest volcanic structure. Scientists Brad Scott and Karen Britton are from the New Zealand Institute of Geological and Nuclear Sciences. Theirs is a dangerous job. They monitor the volcano for any signs that it's about to erupt.
Brad and Karen are working in an extreme environment. Gas masks help them breathe. Karen collects a gas sample from deep within the volcano. Analysis will tell them if there have been changes since their last visit. The volcano constantly emits sulfurous fumes. If it rains here, the water falls as sulfuric acid. In many ways, the landscape mimics the time of the dinosaur extinction. In conditions such as these, large plant-eating dinosaurs with their enormous food requirements would have been the first casualties. Near the island's bay are the ruins of a sulphur works. From 1885, sulphur was mined here to be sold as agricultural fertilizer. It's said that some men on seeing the volcano refused to go ashore. Their fears were not unfounded. In 1914, the crater rim collapsed. Lava roared down from above and the sulphur works was destroyed. 11 lives were lost in the disaster. A rescue party dug trenches through the steaming debris, but no trace of the victims was ever found. Only the factory cat, Peter, survived. Brad and Karen have reached the crater's edge, their critical research area and the most dangerous place on the island. Any significant change in temperature could signify an upcoming eruption. In the short term, if we saw a downward trend in the temperature, that could mean the plumbing system is blocked and a higher possibility of eruption. This is the place that was impacted eight months ago during an eruption. And you'll see behind me here one of our survey pegs, and it was knocked over by the blast. And then behind me here, you see the rock where the blast deposit has just splattered up onto the rock. Island has been built up by continuous volcanic activity over 150,000 years. It's typical of New Zealand's dangerous geology. Conditions here change daily, not over millions of years. White Island helps us understand the origins of New Zealand. As an underwater volcano erupts, more and more lava piles up. Eventually it appears above the sea as a new island. Much of New Zealand was formed in this way. Volcanic activity initially creates one of the most extreme environments on the planet. Groundwater boils in steaming pools. Streams of sulfuric acid run down the crater's slopes. What's extraordinary is that even in these hostile conditions, life can be found. These white strands are algae, a very primitive life form 
But from these simple building blocks, the rest of life can evolve. Away from the active crater, large seabird colonies have been established. White Island gives us clues to New Zealand's development. Around 25 million years ago, it was mostly under the sea. When modern New Zealand started to emerge, oceanic birds may have been among the first visitors. Their droppings fertilize the soil and allow plants to flourish. If the volcano stopped erupting, the island would quickly be covered by vegetation. More animals would find their way from the mainland and make their home here. This process mirrors how many of New Zealand's animals first arrived on its isolated shores. In New Zealand, it seems that however extreme the challenge, nature finds ways to adapt. Nowhere demonstrates this more clearly than New Zealand's Fiordland, one of the most dramatic landscapes in the world. Over the last 45 million years, colliding geological plates deep underground have pushed up rock 20 kilometers. At the highest points, snow and ice are found all year round. In this extreme mountain environment, you wouldn't expect to find reptiles cold-blooded animals that need warmth to heat their body. They've been discovered only recently. Reptile expert Tony Jewell and rock climber Paul Rogers are about to explore one of the area's most remote locations, Sinbad Gully. In this lost world, they hope to find an animal found nowhere else on Earth. It's no surprise that scientists still know very little about this area. Surrounded by steep granite cliffs on three sides, climbing in is a treacherous challenge few have attempted. It's an incredible sight. You're surrounded by vertical rock faces two to three hundred metres high. It's very imposing, but it's probably the most beautiful place I've ever been in New Zealand. For mountain guide Paul Rogers, Sinbad Gully is New Zealand's final frontier. When you're climbing here, you're really in amongst nature. Paul first came here after hearing rumours of a massive, unclimbed vertical rock face. In 2004, he named the 300-metre cliff Shadowland. He would discover an animal that amazed him. 
Clambering among the rocks, he caught glimpses of an extraordinary lizard that's been around for over 80 million years. Reptiles are cold-blooded. They need sun to warm their bodies up, so are usually found in hot places. Here in New Zealand's Sinbad Gully, high up in the mountains, they've broken all the rules. So this big grey wall here overhangs all the way, and two-thirds of the way up, this gecko just came out of the crack and run up my arm. So we found the first gecko in the Sinbad. That's right. We didn't know it was anything special at that yeah. stage. All right, OK, let's go. When they found the first gecko in here, we were very surprised. We hadn't realised that New Zealand lizards had evolved to such extreme conditions in a valley that gets heavily frosted and iced over winter. Rock's nice and warm. It's a perfect day. With luck, the lizards will be out basking. Reaching a sunny spot, Tony finds what they're searching for. Look at that, beautiful brown yeah. chevrons. So this will be the beast you saw up on the Shadowlands wall? I wish my hands were as grippy as their, their, <laughs> yeah. their feet. Amazingly feet, they're the special scales underneath. Yep, rock climbers feet. Yep. Go anywhere, beautiful. It's a cascade gecko, named after the mountain waterfalls. Very few animals, let alone cold-blooded reptiles, could survive in these mountain conditions. This particular gecko is quite skinny. She's a wee bit emaciated, and she's also got distinct frostbite on a number of her toes. This tells us that she's had a hard winter, and she's quite lucky to have survived. Geckos have been able to survive in this extreme alpine environment because of several key adaptations. New Zealand geckos are almost the only geckos in the world to give birth to live young, and they've done this in order to adapt to a generally cold climate. Almost all lizards lay eggs, but in the mountains of New Zealand it would be too cold for the young to develop. Geckos here keep developing eggs inside their bodies to keep them warm and then give birth to live young. So the lizards develop the embryos as much as they can over summer, and then they go and hibernate through winter where relatively little development occurs. And the next summer, they develop them some more. If they're ready to pop out at the end of that summer, they will. But if they're not, they'll carry on for another winter again and pop them out at the end of the third summer. This slow lifestyle means New Zealand's geckos live a surprisingly long time. Many of the lizards living overseas have a much shorter lifespan. Some geckos only live for two years. So the fact that the New Zealand lizards can live 50, 80, 100 years or more is quite extraordinary. So far, a remarkable 99 species of lizard have been discovered in New Zealand. Yet there are no snakes, large lizards, or crocodiles. This is in direct contrast to its neighbour, Australia. The key to this mystery is geology. Around 80 million years ago, the supercontinent Gondwana began to break up and drift apart. New Zealand was one of the first land masses to separate. 30 million years later, Australia also separated. 
It gradually drifted north and became hotter. In contrast to New Zealand, Australia doesn't sit above moving geological plates. It's a continent that's remained virtually unchanged for millions of years. It's also a lot drier than New Zealand. 70% of Australia receives less than 500 millimetres of rainfall per year. It looks like a nightmare of nature. A dragon covered in fearsome spines. The thorny devil has an amazing suit of armor. It is what enables it to survive. Channels run between the scales on its body. Dew collects in them. The water runs along the channels to the lizard's mouth. Australia's hot climate makes it a haven for reptiles of every shape and size. This plump animal is a blue-tongued skink. It's a tasty treat for birds of prey, snakes, and larger lizards. It frightens potential predators off by puffing up its body and displaying a vivid blue tongue inside a bright pink mouth. The blue tongue has been wise to seek cover one of Australia's top predators is on the hunt. This is a parenti, a two metre long monitor lizard. A large mulga snake would make a satisfying meal. This giant lizard isn't just powerful, it also has venom glands in its mouth, which help subdue its prey. The parenti isn't the only venomous reptile in the Australian desert, and it certainly isn't the most dangerous. Australia is home to the 10 most venomous snakes in the world. This snake has just shed its skin. It's at its most beautiful. It's also the most venomous snake on Earth. The inland Taipan. It's estimated that one bite delivers enough venom to kill at least 100 fully grown humans. Desert snakes look for dark, cool places to escape the sun. Mm -hmm. 
Sheds and even houses make good sheltering spots. The snake removal team in the town of Alice Springs are on standby 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Rex and his staff deal with up to four call outs a day to remove deadly snakes from local homes. Okay, what's your address? Okay, are you still watching it? Yep, no worries. Okay, I'll be there shortly. See ya. Every call out is treated as an emergency. If there's a venomous snake in a house, it's potentially life threatening. Oh, how you going, Rick? Good, what do you got for me? Big long steak? <laughs> Probably another Western. He was a goldy brown colour. Toby the dog has been locked away. His mother was killed by a Western brown snake. I'm just going to clear this out of the way first, Cathy. So um, when you're dealing with snakes, you've got to have enough elbow room just to get in there and manoeuvre with them. Just make that a, a block there so he can't go past there. And here you go, Cathy. Can you um, get rid of that for me somewhere? Yeah. A bit more. All good? Yeah, all right. Oh, yeah. Is he there? He's there, Cathy, yeah. Yeah, he's gone right up the top. So, Cathy, if you just stand back here, and if you can watch for me, that side there and that side there, just yep. to see, make sure he doesn't come out the back. OK. It's coming this way. The Australian brown snake, the second most venomous snake in the world. Get him! Oh! <laughs> oh, he's gone around the back. Hang on. Fast and aggressive when disturbed, the Australian western brown snake is notoriously dangerous to capture. Feisty one, this one. <laughs> Get him! Well done, Cathy. OK. We'll just bag him up for you. There you go. All done. He wasn't too bad, really. Mm, safe and sound. Yeah, yeah, we'll take him out bush and go and release him for you. All right, thanks for coming. Thanks, Cathy. Rex is on his way to a property where the snake will be safe and well away from houses. like a pretty good spot to me. Oh, that is a nice looking snake. Excellent condition, look how fat it is. Nice healthy tail as well. The snake will definitely enjoy it out here. home to many dangerous reptiles. So why does its neighbour, New Zealand, have none? For humans, New Zealand is one of the safest places on Earth. It's one of the few countries in the world where there are no venomous snakes. The reason for this is surprisingly simple. 
when New Zealand separated from the supercontinent Gondwana around 80 million years ago, there were no mammals on board, not even rats and mice. When Australia separated 30 million years later, it was home to a perfect food for predatory reptiles. Wherever there are rodents, many snakes have developed venom to kill them. The inland taipan, the most venomous snake in the world, is a frighteningly large, muscular snake up to two and a half metres long. Since a cornered rodent can be dangerous enough to injure or even kill a snake, death needs to come quickly. Each bite injects more than 40,000 times the amount of venom needed to kill a rat. As Australia drifted north, New Zealand followed a very different evolutionary path, starting to disappear under the sea. Around 25 million years ago, when global sea levels were high, much of New Zealand was underwater. Paparoa National Park on the west coast of the South Island can tell us more about this turbulent period in New Zealand's history. Over a hundred square kilometres of limestone cliffs are honeycombed by caves and passages. Limestone is made from the remains of shells and the bones of marine animals. It's a sure sign the area was once beneath the ocean. How you doing, Lauren? All there. Caver Neil Silverwood and his climbing partner, Lauren Kelly, are venturing deep below the surface into another extreme environment. It's 40 metres straight down. The team is working with the Department of Conservation to map the caves and find out what animals managed to survive in this deep, dark world. Last daylight today. Taparoa National Park is about 100 square kilometres of limestone. 90% of that is unexplored. No humans ever walk through it. Just really watch these straws, Lauren, when you come through. Okay. Neil and Lauren are in a place that's never seen daylight. Wow! Stunning. As they move ever further into the caves, they have no idea what they'll find. Gosh, this is going to be tens of thousands of years old. Amazing. What drives cavers is a chance to explore, to be the first human being through a new passage, to put the first light into those places and the first footprints into worlds we know almost nothing about. Just a fascinating place to come. And I often think of it as the land that time lost. And in many ways, there's two worlds in New Zealand. There's the surface, and there's this world. You okay? Come on up. Yep. Give your hand. It's a fantastic place to go. Just completely different than anywhere else on the planet. Give your hand if you like. You're right. I'm good. Yeah. 
Vancouver's are really privileged to go places that very few people in the world ever get to see. Wow. Stay low. It's like another universe up there. Stars. And they can be absolutely beautiful, and they're not anything that you would ever see or experience on the surface. With the lights off, a galaxy of tiny blue stars is revealed on the cave roof. That's incredible. The show is provided by an ancient creature found only in New Zealand and Australia. Each blue light is a glowworm, the larval form of a fly called the fungus gnat. Up to 70 sticky threads hang beneath each lava. They're a deadly trap. Light is emitted from a special organ in the glowworm's tail. It attracts small flying insects, such as moths and midges. The hungrier the glowworm, the brighter the light shines. Just as it's done for millions of years, it pulls in its catch. It's just such a different world. What I really like about caving is how many different aspects there are. There's the science, so looking at the different life in here, and there's the geology. The whole history of organic life on Earth is locked into the rock. The limestone rock of the cave system is made of tiny sea creatures. They died, fell to the bottom of an ancient ocean, and over millions of years were compacted. Pretty trippy, you know, thinking about the fact that this was the bottom of the ocean floor. That's why you can see shell fossils around here getting exposed. Most of New Zealand was inundated by the ocean. There was just a small series of islands left. By dating the rock in these caves, we can be sure that around 30 million years ago, most of what we now know as New Zealand was under the ocean. Twenty million years ago, only a few small islands were left. Less than a fifth of today's land area. They were dominated by birds. New Zealand kept sinking and almost vanished below the ocean completely. Titanic forces saved it. In the north, the collision of huge geological plates deep below the earth created volcanoes. The lava that flowed from them built a new world that rose from the sea. Further south, the same colliding plates caused massive uplift. New Zealand's longest mountain range, the Southern Alps, was created. 500 kilometers long, it's the Earth's youngest and most dynamic mountain range. At 3,724 meters, Auraki, Mount Cook, is the tallest peak.
The Southern Alps have only existed for around five million years. In evolutionary time, it's a blink of an eye. A race was on. Which species could evolve fast enough to survive in this new, hostile landscape? When New Zealand first split away from the supercontinent of Gondwana, ancient parrots were on board, direct descendants from small feathered dinosaurs. This is the kaka. As you'd expect for a parrot, it lives in the forest. Its powerful beak is used to rip off bark in search of insects. But a close relation of the kaka evolved to exploit an environment that had much greater challenges. A place where finding food would often be difficult. The stunningly beautiful bird is the care. What makes the care unique is that it's evolved to be an alpine specialist. Life is tough in the mountains, and food in short supply. So how has the kea survived? The answer isn't venom, or even brute strength. The kea uses its brain. Kea are curious about almost anything. At a nearby road tunnel, security cameras catch them busy moving traffic cones. Another popular hobby is vandalising cars. It's of no benefit to them, they just enjoy it. To learn more about why the care has evolved such high intelligence, Nicola Torkey, the Department of Conservation's Threatened Species Ambassador, visits Willowbank Wildlife Reserve. She's meeting with scientist Martina Scheist and her assistant, Cecilia. Nick's hoping their long-term study of captive cares will give her clues to keep the wild birds out of trouble. Come on. Can you just explain what this apparatus is supposed to do? This apparatus is built in a way that two birds can work together to pull the string and get access to the food. The kia are about to be challenged by an intelligence test known as the loose string test. If one bird pulls at the string, it will just unravel. To get the food, two birds must work together, pulling from either end of the string at the same time. Wow. Really fast learners. And uh, one of the kia here has a pretty badly deformed beak. What happened? That's Katie. She was brought in when she was still very young. They found her in the wild with her beak already deformed and gone. But she's doing great. <laughs> very dominant bird. To make the test more difficult, a board is put in place to stop one bird from entering. The other must wait until help arrives. The results of this research have been extraordinary. And he's not pulling, because he knows that he actually needs a partner. Ah. Kia will wait over a minute for help to arrive. Wow. And in the experiment, um, we had birds waiting 65 seconds. 
It's the first time that it's shown that a bird species can actually wait for such a long time. This is longer than has been shown for any other animal. Waiting 60 plus yep. seconds. What does that look like compared to other species? Well, dogs can wait two seconds. Dogs can wait two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, they go, oh, food. food. Yeah. <laughs> Elephants will wait for 45 seconds. Chimps for only 30. In terms of birds, how intelligent are kia compared to other species of birds? <laughs> the kia are ranging definitely on top yeah. of the most intelligent birds. Right at the top. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kia are globally recognised as one of the most intelligent bird species on the planet. And perhaps this intelligence evolved as they tried to explore new niches. As the Southern Alps rose higher and higher, the Kia took advantage of these new alpine environments and had to be clever to find the food under things and in things and solve problems working together to ensure they could survive. The challenge of adapting to rapid geological change has made the Kea possibly the most intelligent bird on Earth. As we discover more about New Zealand's animals, they provide a window into the country's geological past. We now know that New Zealand was isolated for millions of years. Animals evolved here that are found nowhere else on Earth. 30 million years before the extinction of the dinosaurs, New Zealand almost sank below the ocean. Volcanic activity saved it. Limestone was lifted up, worn away by water, it's just such a different world. and shaped into intricate cave systems. A galaxy of glowworms has created one of nature's most amazing sights. In the south of New Zealand, the same titanic forces created mountain ranges. New Zealand is the ultimate proof that however extreme the conditions, nature finds a way to adapt. And over millions of years, it can even create the extraordinary creatures we see today.